What's up everybody, welcome back. My name is Josh and today we're talking about my real estate investing portfolio, what I've learned, where I got started and why I'm continuing to hunt that down. It is just a piece of my entire investment portfolio which I did talk about in the plan for investing in 2021 which you guys can go ahead and watch that but today we're talking strictly on real estate and where I'm at. And wait, before we get started, if you like the real estate investing pieces, if you like this type of content, go ahead and press like because it actually helps get this video to other people that like real estate investing, people that are just getting started. All right, let's go. Like a lot of people, I got started in real estate and looking at different ways to invest back in 2014 and I was inspired by Rich Dad Poor Dad different way of thinking and all I had up to that point in time was my 401k and liquid cash from the medical job that gave me a lot of the capital. And I didn't really have a lot of education on where I should put it. I started to do a lot of research on real estate investments and really other ways of creating an income stream and passive income and it was actually on a trip over to Europe as I needed a break from work. I don't know if anybody else has that same exact feeling that I ran into somebody that was really familiar with a resource called Bigger Pockets, which I will post in the description below. It's essentially a real estate investing community. People that have started at nothing and then built up real estate wealth. Anyways, the, the, the most exciting piece of that community is learning from other people who have done it and learning from other people that have done it that maybe started out with a nine to five and had to figure out a way and get creative with financing to get to that passive income source and create all this wealth. Started to do a lot of research on there as well. And finally, about a year, it was, of course, paralysis by analysis. About a year later, I finally purchased my first property from across the United States. Now I'll talk a little more about some of the metrics that I was looking for in a property, but I think I do have to address in that start what I was really paralyzed by, other than the fact that I was gonna have to spend the most amount of money on a property I ever did, which is a caveat there if you do it the right way. For me, I was still learning, so I did end up putting 20, 25% down. That's a lot of money. So uh, aside from that being the, the paralyzed piece for me, I was actually paralyzed by just finding the right property manager because I was across the United States, finding the right realtor, understanding how to evaluate these properties, and just making sure I had everything in place from again, managing this stuff from across the United States. So there's a couple things that I was really uh, kind of tied to and kind of held me back from pulling the trigger at first and really jumping in there. So after talking about how I got started in it, normally people are like, well, why? Why real estate? Why real estate? Why buy and holds? Why are you doing this? There's a lot of questions that just essentially revolve around the entire why idea. And, and for me, it, it boils down to a couple things. One of which is I, I strongly believe money buys free time in real estate investing, multifamily investing, which I take part in, I feel is one of those sources of income, income streams that you can generate with your own capital. And that's just been a focus of mine because if you have other income streams creating income for you instead of your W-2, eventually those real estate your dividend stock portfolio, a side hustle, whatever that case may be, eventually can replace that. And now you're not trading your time for money anymore. Your money is actually kind of giving you that time back, right? Can you see the, the dynamic there, which that's already out there. That's the financial independence, retire early movement. There's, there's a lot of people that talk about, I'm just sharing my why, why do I go after real estate? So I think that's, that's one of the reasons for real estate. It's a, it's a strategic risk for me that ties to that income stream. I want multiple income streams. The second piece is kind of mitigating risk. And I, I think real estate and the way the rental markets are and the way that people move around, that people always <laughs> need a place to live. And I think if you take good care of your properties and that you provide decent landlording ability capabilities, you're gonna you're gonna have a pretty strong investment. Now We've already seen what COVID has done to some people that are maybe a smaller multifamily investing investor. It's been pretty aggressive, right? Especially for people not paying rent. And I've already heard nightmare stories about that on the on the landlord side. Of course, the tenants are also having an issue because they can't pay rent. Either way, there's always those risks. But for for the majority of the time, I I strongly believe that real estate, a home place to live is is a pretty strong need for a human being and that that'll be around for quite a while whether that takes the place of multiple apartments or homes or people starting to buy up more homes I think there's always gonna be a place for 
rental properties. The last piece, my, the, my last motivator, the last why for me personally has to do with real estate as a tool to wealth accumulation. A lot of people I think see real estate as a higher income class. The people who already have the money are investing in real estate, which is definitely true. And obviously there's a blueprint there. If you have money, it's probably a good idea to put some into real estate and still leverage yourself in a way, which I'm sure that's another argument. I'm sure people will disagree there where you could just buy out cash, but there's numbers there where leveraging yourself probably makes a lot of sense. Anyways, that's not the point. The point is, is that real estate investing is accessible to people that are in a nine to five, people that are making 40 to $50,000. It's going to be more challenging. It's not gonna be the easiest way to do it, but that is one of those vehicles that the way that they have loans set up, FHA loans, conventional loans with a low amount down and mortgage insurance, there's a lot of ways to get into properties. And if you run your numbers right, you can get in, have it grow for a year or two, refinance out, get into another property waterfall and you start building wealth through real estate. So the cool piece is that this is not just something that you have a lot of money in and you can get into real estate. I wanna be able to, really the why here is teach people that it is accessible and expand on the community like bigger pockets that you can take capital that you already have and let real estate do some of that work for you. If you run your numbers right over time, you're, you'll start to build wealth and you'll start to build this passive income stream, whether or not you're making $100,000 a year or you're making $40,000 a year. All right, so here's the good stuff. This is where we're getting started on the actual numbers, the, the revenue, where I wanna be at the end of this year. I'll just kind of start at the beginning where I started and it was in 2015 with a single family home and then ended up being a triplex about two months later. So I ended up getting two properties within uh, about two months, three months of each other in the same year. And that ended up being about four doors, if we did that correctly, triplex is three doors. And then of course the single family, one door. And ended up raising rents for all of them. Didn't have to really remodel the triplex too much just because the, the market's rents were so low. The single family was in a good spot by a college. So I got to rent by the room essentially, but it still was just one door. Uh, ended up uh, appreciating pretty nicely. And it ended up doing, uh, especially for the triplex, ended up doing a cash out refinance on the triplex because it just it ended up appreciating so quickly about three years later, got into a duplex where I moved into the, the top unit and rented out the bottom unit, remodeled a little bit, and then eventually sold the single family home and wanted to actually spend some of that money and didn't do a 1031, which, I'm sure people will also say there's there's an issue there, but that basically just uh, defers your taxes on that home sale. But it just didn't make sense in terms of making sure I was getting it done in 90 days or whatever the timeline essentially was. So I ended up selling the single family home to get into a property and of course COVID hit. So I'm, I'm now currently, if we're following the math here, which is probably challenging, still have that triplex of so three doors, ended up getting duplex. So ended up adding one door there, but uh, under one mortgage, you've got two income streams. The plan is essentially to get another two to three doors this year. So either a duplex or a triplex is what I'm trying to get to. So hopefully either seven to eight doors. And then I'm gonna go ahead and give you a breakdown on the numbers of where I'm at right now. So mortgages right now are $4,500 a month. And that means I'm making about $902 uh, gross profit monthly right now. So that's about $225 a door. Uh, it's not counting the door that I'm in. I normally shoot for $300 to $400 a door. Again, I will be at that number with my current door that I'm living in. So what that means for the year is that's $10,824 gross profit and gross revenue is about $65,000 for the year. So $54.25 a month. Now what's really interesting here is if I actually count the door that I'm in, so I move out of it, which is where I run the numbers normally, that I will actually be at six thousand seven hundred twenty five dollars so about eighty thousand dollars in gross profit a year my debt coverage ratio right now is in between 1.25 and 1.5 you normally want to be above that one percent that's the of course the one percent rule now the goal is like i said two to three more doors i'd like to get to a 40k gross profit or net and then a hundred thousand dollars gross which is realistic if i find another nice duplex or a triplex now here are a couple of lessons that i think i picked up over the very long six seven years i've been investing in real estate so far one of which is 
being really conservative with your numbers. This is actually a pro forma sheet I've received before and I keep it on file because I still use it. It covers a lot of the normal stuff that you would want to pay attention to, taxes, insurance, maintenance, management, utility, anything like that. Actually, there's, <laughs> there's an acronym for that. It's called TIMMUR, T-I-M-M-U-R. And that, by the way, that R is actually repairs too. Anyways, the performer sheet that you're looking at right now covers a lot of that. You add all that stuff in, you can kind of see if you're gonna find a decent cap rate when you're looking at the property, if you're looking at a certain amount of return on investment your first year, and then just overall cash flow too. So it's really been helpful for me and what I've always tried to do is keep it really, really conservative. I think the other big piece for me, was, and it, it was very apparent after I got the single family home was, what are your goals? What are you trying to get accomplished? And I mean real estate specifically. There's so many ways to kind of peel back the real estate onion, the, the different layers that they have, and different ways to make this work for different people. I ended up going with a very focused strategy on multifamily because it mitigates risk. You have one mortgage for more than one income stream. It's easier to maintain when you have three doors under one roof. So it's kind of mitigating the risk while also easier to actually manage it itself. And then the buy and hold was just what I wanted to do. Let the properties appreciate if you do your numbers correctly and you find a really good area. And then also raising rents as the market rents go up and then giving your tenants a place to live. So you have both cash flow and then you have the appreciation of the property. The other big piece to that is your goal of what, what are you looking at? I just mentioned it, cash flow, right? For me, it is income stream, it is passive income. I wanna make sure that the cash flow itself makes sense. So gross profit, the gross revenue, what's actually happening on the expenses, all that stuff that I'm getting because at this point in time, since I have a W-2 and I have other income streams as well, a lot of that is being focused on going straight back into the real estate investing portfolio and getting this portfolio created so that I have more income coming through that way. Lesson number three for me is actually to build partnerships. I'm already in sales, I'm big on, on the networking side and you are your network essentially, but the relationships that I've built through real estate, I've got cell phones to realtors, property managers, lenders, contractors, people who've invested in larger commercial deals all over the place and, and I think I've already had um, I've had great times with the contractor that's helped me out across all my properties and I've got a cell phone. We're always connected. I can always count on him to take care of things. And a lot of this real estate game is building that relationship. The realtor and the property manager that I work with are absolutely amazing. Always take care of me, always on top of it. It makes accounting and tax season a lot easier to handle, to be honest. There are always deals being brought to the table and then the performer that I showed are, is normally being created by the realtor as well. So it's, it's almost using my numbers and their numbers together and, and making sure that everything makes sense. I have somebody else taking a good look at these properties. So last one is the house hacking. This is talked about all over the place, especially on bigger pockets, but essentially, putting a low amount of money down on a property to get into a multifamily property, renting out one side, essentially having your mortgage paid for, and then letting the property appreciate, and then you can actually refinance, get out, and do it again, and continue to do that, so it kind of waterfalls. And I didn't do that at first because I was across the country, I couldn't live in any of the properties, so that wasn't gonna be able to happen. But when I finally got over to this area, I ended up doing that house hacking and it's it's great especially if you don't have a family even if you do have a family or haven't started having kids yet i think it's realistic and a lot of people do make those moves definitely not for everybody but if you want to expedite your investment in real estate and continue to grow that portfolio maybe faster than somebody who couldn't take advantage of it. And that's where I probably would have started a little earlier because I am 31 now. That's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching everything on the real estate side. I got plenty of videos on both selling my very first property, not as a realtor, but as the investor. And then what I look for in a property as well, I'll post those in the description below. If you've got any questions, any comments, go ahead and leave one below, or you can find me on biggerpockets.com also in the description below, great community, what helped me learn a lot about getting started in real estate. And then please, if you like the video, go ahead and press like because it actually helps with getting this to other people who are interested in real estate investing. Have a great weekend.